Hello, welcome to Learn Swift for Beginners, Lesson 2. In this lesson, we're going to talk about data types. Did you know in the previous lesson that you were already working with different data types? Well, let me point it out to you. Let me open up the playground that we were working with in the previous lesson. Do you remember how we were trying to reassign data into the variable str? And I was assigning something like a number into str. And I told you that you couldn't do that. In fact, Xcode tells you that you can't do that right here. So if we take this little console area and we scroll the scroll bar all the way up to the top, the error message actually tells you what's going on. Cannot assign value of type int to type string. Well, what's an int and what's a string? Well, those are two examples of data types. Just as the name implies, a data type is a classification or a type of data. For example, a string is a data type that describes pieces of text. An int, short for integer, is a data type for whole numbers, negative or positive. However, there are many more data types than just these two. Other types of data that you'll commonly be working with are float for floating point numbers or decimal numbers, and then there's double for decimal numbers where the decimal portion may be very large, and then there's Boolean, which represents true or false, or in other words, yes or no. These are some of the more common data types that you'll be using. And the reason why there are different types of data is because the system stores different types of data differently. And so when we go back to the playground and we take a look at this variable that we declared here, str, and it stores a string, the system has allocated this variable to store this piece of text or string, in other words. And when you try to assign an int into that same variable, it doesn't allow you to do that because strings and ints are stored differently. Now you might be wondering what differentiates a variable that stores a string, like this str variable, versus a variable that stores a number or an int, like this variable a. Well, when you declare a variable, you learned in the previous lesson that you use the keyword var and then the name of the variable. Well, optionally, you can also put beside the variable name colon followed by the data type. And if you declare your variable this way, you're basically telling the system that this variable can only store this type of data. And if you omit that part, and you just simply declare your variable with var and then the variable name, then what it's going to do is as soon as you assign a piece of data into that variable, it's going to take a look at what type of data that is and assumes that that variable stores that data type. So now going back into the playground here, it's as if we declared this str variable like this, right? And these ones are like this. Now for instance, if I declared this str variable like this, then this line would be an error because I'm trying to assign a string into a variable that is of type int. So it's not going to like that. Now let's change this back to a string for a second and go back to this line where there's an error. Now you understand why um, this line is in red because we can't assign an int into a string variable. Well, there are ways to convert data from type to type. In some cases, it makes sense. Like 29 here, this int can be represented as a piece of text simply like that, right? But conversely, this hello playground line right here, I can't convert that to an integer because it doesn't make sense that this message could be represented by a number. So for example, just as a little preview here, if I wanted to convert this number or this integer into a string, I would create a new string and pass in the number like that. Now I'm not going to go into detail about why this works or what this line is, because then you're going to have to learn about classes and initializers and stuff like that. But for now, in this lesson, I want you to understand that there are different data types, why there are different data types, and how that 
comes into effect when you're declaring your variables and working with your variables and your data. Now before we end this lesson off, let me just show you a couple of examples of the other data types we talked about. So a float could be something like that. A double usually also looks like this and you're not going to have a really large decimal point unless it's like a result of a calculation that you're doing. Um, and let me show you a boolean which is represented as bool. So you can set this to the keyword true or false which is going to come in handy for the next lesson that we're going to do on if statements. Oh and there is a mistake here because I'm redeclaring C. Did you see that? Um, in the previous lesson we talked about how you can't redeclare a variable. See we declared var C up here but I forgot that we had tried to declare a constant with the same name down here. So this is going to have to be F. I'll show you some other types of data conversions here. So I can say, let's print out, um, let's change C, which is a float into an int. And what's going to happen is that it just drops the decimal portion of that. So if you did print, let's convert D, which is a double into an integer, you can see here that it just chops off the 0.9 and you get 13. Now there is a rounding function which we can try out right now like that and then inside the parentheses you can put D which is our double 13.9 and what you're going to get as soon as it finishes processing is 14 like that but notice that the result is also a decimal number see it has a 0, 0.0 there so what you can do is wrap the result of that rounding inside a pair of brackets like this inside an int uh, and then you'll get 14 without the decimal okay so that does it for data types if you're enjoying the learn swift series so far please subscribe to the channel and please give this video a thumbs up that's going to help give my channel more exposure and so we can gain more subscribers and i can continue producing these tutorials for you guys so thanks again, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.